Stovetop mac and cheese right here at Brain Saver Protocol. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to make some pasta. Pasta! Pasta! Before we start, though, I got to check my oxygen levels. Just hang on. I got an oxygen meter on my finger. Just hold on here. Let me just read it. Yeah. 99. Oh, 100%. Okay, no. Nope. My oxygen's okay. All right, just hold on, though, here. I got to make sure I check my heart rate. I just don't want to start this live yet. Hold on, just want to know what my heart rate is per minute. I'm sorry about this. You guys, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi. I think I'm right. Okay, about 70. All right. All right, hold on, though. Uh, um, I got to check my oxygen on the other hand. Just, just bear with me. This isn't a disorder. No way. It's not a disorder. Um, hold on. Okay, oxygen level, good right there. Got to check one more time. Just hold on right here. I want to check my heart rate per minute. Just bear with me. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi. All right, heart rate's okay. Got to check my blood sugar. I got a monitor on my arm right now. Check my blood sugar. I got to make sure that's right. Every hour I'm checking my blood sugar too. Yeah. All right. Just let me take a look at it. It's private though. It means I have to take off all my clothes. I have it underneath here. Just give me two seconds here. Let me see. Blood sugar looking okay. Looking okay. Must be doing something right there. All right. You guys, we're talking about blood sugar, hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia, talking about insulin resistance. Let's, uh, what else can we talk about? All about that. Blood sugar. I'm just going to say it straight off the bat right now. In order to have a blood sugar issue whatsoever, like a blood sugar issue outside of the fact that someone isn't eating, say, a blood sugar issue, you have to have three things, one out of three things wrong. You could have all three things wrong. You could have your liver be a problem, your pancreas be a problem, or your adrenals be a problem. You can have adrenals and pancreas and your liver's fine. You can have pancreas and your liver, your adrenals are fine. You can have liver, adrenals, and pancreas having a problem, all three of them. But these are the three things right there that determine if you're gonna be having a blood sugar problem. So that one day, one day down the road, after eating a little too much of this, or one day down the road, after eating a little too much of this right here, right, or one day down the road, Having a little too much of this right here. Excuse me, I'm going to take an ice cream break. If you guys don't mind, I got an ice cream right here. Whoa, shit. Let me see. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got to check my oxygen levels one more time. Okay, oxygen at 100. Feeling good about that. Just hold on, hold on. Uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out my heart... Per, per minute, I don't think I have this one down yet, but I will. The point I'm trying to say right here, what we're talking about, we're talking about blood sugar, we're talking about new trends that happen all the time. A lot of people are checking their blood sugar every hour, they're monitoring their blood sugar, and then they think they got it down with what they're eating. They're eating healthier, they're eating whether it's plant-based or they're keto or a healthy, what's so-called healthy animal protein-based diet, they think they got it all in check. I'm not talking about diabetics, okay? I'm not talking about type 1 diabetes. I'm not talking about um, type 2 diabetes. I'm not talking about all the different types that medical medium coined a long time ago in the terms of how many types there really are. I'm not going into that. I'm going into like every day, whether you're in fitness every day, whether you're concerned about your blood sugar, I'm talking about that aspect of it. Right now, people think that they're in control of their health because they're looking at their, their blood sugar, they're monitoring their blood sugar, and they think they have total control over their health. And then as they're eating and doing things and taking care of themselves. But what can happen is it can create an eating disorder, it can create OCD, it can actually add to somebody's OCD, it can become overwhelming. It can create anxiety. It can be something that it's more important than what you're doing in that moment. It's more important than what's happening in that moment or that day. It can confuse people. 
a whole bunch of things that are happening with that. So I want to go into blood sugar issues, also monitoring blood sugar and so forth. So let's go, let's roll into it a little bit. First and foremost, somebody living their life perfectly fine. They don't have a problem. And then suddenly their A1C is rising. They're at the doctor's office. They get some blood work. Their A1C is up and something's wrong. And they're like, what's wrong, right? And what people don't realize is that it's a process over the years of three things breaking down. The liver is the most popular one, the most important one as far as with blood sugar to start with because the liver starts to get stagnant and sluggish. And when it gets stagnant and sluggish and starts to break down, it puts a burden on so many different levels on the body. So the liver starts breaking down. The ability to break down fats, to disperse it with bile reserves, that starts to break down and wear down. So fats stay in the bloodstream even longer. They stay in the liver even longer. And that gets people in trouble. So I want to bring this guy in here. We're making a stovetop macaroni and cheese in a little bit. Hang around for that because I would love to make that for you guys. Macaroni and cheese. All right. So people get stagnant sluggish livers. They do. Most people who get the stagnant sluggish livers are getting it because they're on the high fat diets their whole life. Because everybody is eating a certain amount of fat every single day, whether it's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. If you're intermittent fasting, you're still going to eat fat at the end of the day. You're going to have it either 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but you're going to end up eating fat at some point, even when you're intermittent fasting. But the fats over time burden and break down the liver. And when it burns and breaks down the liver, we end up getting blood sugar problems. That's why type 2 diabetes, when people start eating better and better, suddenly they either need less insulin or the numbers appear better. Their A1C is better because their liver's not burdened down by fats as much anymore. So people will be like, well, I don't do fast food anymore. I don't do restaurant food anymore. I don't do junk food, you know, greasy food, fried food. I'm doing lean animal protein. I'm eating more salads. I'm eating healthier and my A1C is dropping because their insulin resistance is reducing. Because what they were doing before though, over the years, led them to a stagnant sluggish liver, eventually putting a burden on their pancreas, eventually creating a problem where it even weakened their adrenals and then their A1C started to climb. So that's one way we get problems with blood sugar issues. Another is if pathogens get into the liver and someone has the Epstein-Barr virus, the Epstein-Barr virus has been in the liver for a long time. It's causing wear and tear. It's producing a tremendous amount of byproduct. That byproduct builds up in the liver. It starts to get dysfunctional, coupled with the high fat diet along the way. And then the liver starts to break down and get sluggish and stagnant any kind of viruses. The liver is like the virus home. HHV6, HHV7, cytomegalovirus, virus, shingles virus, herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, all the different Epstein-Barr viruses, plus bacteria too, all harbor and hide inside people's livers. And over time, if we're not taking care of our liver and we're eating all these high-fat dishes and high-fat meals and all these foods we're not supposed to be eating every every single day, we're burdening the liver, plus we're feeding most likely with the choices we're making. We're feeding the bugs that reside inside the liver, and then that grows more and more, creating a, um, a breakdown of the liver, stagnant, sluggish, fatty liver usually too, all around. And then the blood sugar becomes unstable and people have problems. And sure, people can be like, well, I can go and start exercising. I can get my life back. If, if you're not chronically ill and you can exercise, 
I'm going to go and watch my diet. I'm going to watch my calories. I'm going to eat better. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a little intermittent fasting. Maybe I'll eat a healthier diet. Maybe I'll eat more salads, whatever it is. If they start noticing improvements, their blood sugar comes down a little bit and they start to kind of recoup and they seem to get their bearings and they seem to get ahead of it. But in the end, it's not fixing the problem completely and they end up eating way too much fat. No one fixes what's wrong as far as the viral issues that happen inside the liver and inside the body. The breakdown of the, the liver when it's actually infested with um, pathogens and people don't get ahead of that. So over time, people just get sick. And one thing that I think people have to understand that no matter what, everybody is going to be sick with something. No matter what. You can see the best trainer on social. You can see the um, healthiest weightlifters, bodybuilders on social. They're still going to be sick with something. Eventually, it doesn't make anybody indestructible. Nobody's indestructible. People get sick no matter what. And in the end, they're going to get sick. If they get sick later on in life, they get sick later on in life. If they get sick in their 60s, they get sick in their 60s. They get sick in their 70s. Whichever it is, it hits them one way or another. So it's important to know really what's going inside in the body so you can avoid as many pit, pitfalls as possible and get yourself to a place where you can at least avoid some of the worst conditions or some of the most troublesome or mysterious conditions as you're living your life. But either way, when people say, oh, I'm going to live forever, well, we can't live forever. We can't live for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's just not going to happen. We're not going to live to be 500 years old. We're not going to be live to be 600 years old. It's not going to happen. So with that in mind, we have to protect ourselves as good as we can. And notice that people see young people and they think, whoa, I'm going to listen to that young person because that young person has it all down. That 25-year-old who's, you know, doing the bodybuilding, who's eating all the right things, it seems. That's where I want to be. That's who I want to be. And don't realize that that's a far cry from chronic illness. It's a far cry from mysterious chronic illness. Because you can get mysterious chronic illness at 19 years old, 15 years old, 10 years old, 25 years old, and whatever age. And there's a big confusion to someone who actually is an athlete or someone who is young and strong to somebody who's chronically sick and actually has problems with their health that's mysterious, like an autoimmune condition that they still don't understand or anything about what they, about that autoimmune condition do they understand. Blood sugar is kind of this thing where it's a little bit taking over because you got all these people in the world right now, they don't know why they're struggling. They don't know why they have anxiety. They don't know why they have depression or eczema and psoriasis. They don't know why they have chronic fatigue syndrome and autoimmune diagnosis, lupus. They don't know why they have tingles and numbness and aches and pains and back pain, body pain, head pain. They don't know why they have blurry eyes and they don't know why they have burning skin and tingles and numbness, like I said before, and vertigo and dizziness. And there's this group of people it doesn't know why. So when they search around on social and they look around the internet, they run across, well, maybe your blood sugar is it your blood sugar is your blood sugar is your blood. Maybe it's that. And then it feels like you can gain some kind of control monitoring your blood sugar, not even if you're not a diabetic. So then it's easy to fall into, well, let me see my blood sugar and let me see what I'm eating and let me see what my blood sugar is doing. But really that's a trap because it takes us away from really what's wrong. The real things that are wrong and the real problems people have and why they're sick. It pulls us away from that so we miss the ball. We don't have our eyes on the right ball. Instead, we end up falling into traps where we're checking our oxygen levels every hour. We're checking our heart rate. We're checking our blood sugar every hour or two hours. And then it becomes this obsession where our whole life is about our blood sugar and we're watching it and we're monitoring it and we're looking at our monitors and it's a it's there's a big difference when you're a type 1 diabetic or a type 2 diabetic right and you want to keep an eye on it people shouldn't otherwise people shouldn't live their life worried about it athletes shouldn't live their life worrying about it 
just people who aren't athletic shouldn't worry about living their life worrying about it. And in general, and people who are chronically sick shouldn't worry about it either. There's more important things to worry about. Um, Melissa on IG says, I haven't had any blood sugar issues since starting medical medium foods. And that takes me to the next place is medical medium information. Medical medium protocols are already blood sugar supporting. They always were. Like medical medium protocols are never like intermittent fast on coffee all day long. Make sure you stay on coffee. You know, make sure you're, you know, just drinking your coffee every single morning and throughout the afternoon, intermittent fast. And that's it until you eat sometime at some later point of the day. There's ways to do it where you're not eating a whole bunch of intense heavy food in the morning where you can actually keep that away and you can still take care of yourself, which leads to fats. I want to talk about fats if you guys are open to that. It plays a, an enormous part of the blood sugar role is how much fat intake we have, how many fats we're consuming. That plays a massive role into in blood sugar stability. So I want to go into that a little bit too. So I'm just going to move this guy over if you guys are okay. And here's the other thing too. Intermittent fasting leads to blood sugar crashing. That's something to understand all on its own. So what you see in front of me right here are adrenals and kidneys, but you're looking at these adrenal glands right on top of the kidneys. Now, adrenal glands are a critical part of how we keep blood sugar stable. So when you're doing medical medium information, you're restoring adrenal glands. That includes, if you're doing any of the medical medium cleanses, if you're doing the 369, if you're doing the 369 advanced, if you're doing the monocleanse, heavy metal detox, whichever it is, it's supporting of the adrenal. It's why people are here. It's a big part of why people heal and get stronger when they're doing medical medium protocols, such as the medical medium cleanses. The 28 day cleanse is supportive of the adrenals. And there's something that I hear out there every now and then. It's like, oh, I'm cleansing too hard. It, it's going to be hard on my adrenals. I'm cleansing too hard. It's too tough on my adrenals. That's not true unless you're doing something that's not a medical medium cleanse. Maybe you're doing some other cleanse out there and then I can't speak for that. I can't say, well, I don't know if that's hard on your adrenals. I do know that just intermittent fasting alone is hard on the adrenals. And this isn't an intermittent fasting show, but I'm saying that because a lot of people are doing it and they're burning out their adrenals while they're doing it. And that's really important to know. So when you're doing like a medical medium 369 or a mono cleanse or heavy metal detox cleanse or a 28 day cleanse, a medical medium, you're supporting your adrenals even while you're cleansing, even while poisons and toxins are leaving the body, it's still supporting your adrenals, not only supporting them, restoring them and bringing them back. But I think what happens, there are other cleanses out there in the world, in the industry, health industry, that do hurt the adrenals. And there are other cleanse, cleanses out there and people doing that actually say, oh, my adrenals, my adrenaline, it's from too much cleansing. But that's not medical medium information or medical medium cleanses. That's an, a critical piece of information to understand. Now. In order to protect the adrenals, you have to have enough mineral salts, enough trace mineral salts. So that's critical. What you'll find on medical medium cleanses is you'll find this right here, which is really important to see. And you guys know what this is right here. This is a celery juice. Celery juice is one of the most supportive for the adrenal glands because of the trace mineral salts critical for adrenals. So somebody else's cleanse out there is not going to have celery juice in it. 
I don't know what it's going to have in there. Maybe it's going to have some weird paras parasitical blend you send down and mix with water. Maybe it's going to have something else. Maybe they're going to say you can still do your coffee. Maybe they're going to say you can still do cacao nibs and your, you know, your cacao. Maybe it's going to be any of that. Maybe it's, they're going to say you can still do your apple cider vinegar and they're going to tell you that's fine. Hey, do your apple cider vinegar. Some cacao nibs right there. Some cocoa powder right there. Some apple cider vinegar right here. All of those are destructive to the adrenal glands. Highly injurious to adrenal glands over time. Why am I saying this? What does it matter? Because people are worried about blood sugar. Well, if you're really worried about blood sugar, then you might want to know what affects your blood sugar. When adrenal glands weaken and start to break down, when they start to go downhill, your adrenals, your blood sugar gets crazy unstable. It just starts to go wacko. Important to know. And so people are high on their caffeine, they're high on their drugs, right? All these different things. They're high on stimulants. They're high on their coffee all the time. They're high on their chocolate ice cream. Let's see if I have chocolate in here today. I got chocolate ice cream. They're high in their chocolate ice cream and their adrenals are taking a hit. Boom, 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 boom. They're taking a hit every time you're having that cacao, every time you're having that chocolate, every time you're having your chocolate. This is chocolate coconut ice cream. I should be fine. I'm just gonna have some ch chocolate coconut ice cream with almond milk in it. Totally different, AW. You don't know what you're talking about. That one's safe and really good. What people don't realize, it's still going to hammer your adrenals and break them down over time. Very important to know. So everybody is being trained to be on stimulants all the time. It's like, I'm on stimulants. I'm on a high. I'm trying to chase a high. Caffeine and stimulants added to a high-fat diet. Both of that is really hard because a high fat diet is stimulating all on its own. So here's what happens when you go and you eat something like this. When you eat a nice greasy cheeseburger, it tastes so good, bite into it, mmm, so yummy. You're biting into that flesh with that cheese and it's greasy and delicious and juicy. You get an adrenal high. That's when it hits. When you get your pizza, and it could be a vegan pizza. Vegan pizza can be really high in fat, totally jacked up with fat. And when you get all that fat in your system, your adrenals have to thin out your blood. So your adrenals are pumping to thin out the blood. And that's hard on the adrenals too. So what you'll find is that when you're doing like a medical medium cleanse and the 369 advanced or the 28 day cleanse, you'll see that the fats aren't there for a reason to finally restore your adrenal glands. But giving you enough calories, glucose, to help keep you going, to keep your brain going, to make you strong, keeping the fats out so you can cleanse poisons and toxins without getting sicker. And that's really important right there. On it. So let's go into that a bit. When people are eating too much high fat, your pancreas takes a hit with that constantly. So not only does your liver take a hit, but your pancreas takes a hit. So a lot of people are on high fat diets and it's hitting their pancreas hard it's hitting their adrenals hard because their adrenals are releasing all this adrenaline to thin out the blood because you need that adrenaline to move that fat around and help disperse it. And then the liver's got to release all this bile. And that takes us to like another level. What happens is that everybody's on the high fat diets. Their liver's doing double time. Their adrenals are doing double time. Their pancreas is doing double time, all three, and then something's got to give. The A1C, blood sugar instability, hypoglycemia, when it's uncalled for. 
hyperglycemia when it's uncalled for, blood sugar instability, up and down, Whew, goes down real fast, goes up real fast, isn't stabilized. Well, you know, I saw this new practitioner and they said, you better eat some nuts with your cheese. I saw this other new doctor and this other new doctor said, I better eat like some salmon with berries. I saw this other practitioner and that practitioner told me that I should have an apple with peanut butter on it. It helped to keep the blood sugar stable. Another practitioner said I should have some tofu with some vegetables and that'll keep the blood sugar going. It's like all this stuff you hear out there, there's a lot of confusion to food combining with blood sugar. And that's where we run into a mess. Because if someone sells somebody the idea that you can monitor your blood sugar and food combine around it and watch it, and as, as if that is going to be control for you, then that's trouble. Trouble in paradise all on its own. So I want to cut into that a little bit. On IG, my husband's doctor just told him he is headed for diabetes. Now he is listening to me about eating better and applying some medical medium tools. Incredible. Congratulations to him. I'm proud of him. And I'm proud of you too. So you guys, I'm just boiling a little water right here because I'm going to be cooking pasta in a little bit. I'm going to make, make some stovetop macaroni and cheese, which sounds like not a good thing to eat at all. Sounds bad. Stovetop macaroni and cheese. Elevate Evolve says, I'm not perfect with this information yet, but I keep trying and don't give up. I'm continuing to make progress even though I still struggle with food addiction. I cannot express how grateful I am. Proud of you. Thank you for being here. One of the three things starts to go bonkers. Whether it's the adrenal glands, the liver, or the pancreas. You might be somebody where it's two, adrenal glands and liver. Another person, it's pancreas and liver. Another person, it's adrenal glands and pancreas. Another person, it's just the adrenal glands. But when they start to go south, blood sugar becomes unstable. It drops too fast. You get the shakes. It goes up too fast. You get the dizziness. It goes down too fast. You get both. It goes all over the place. And you go to this doctor and this doctor and this doctor. See, you're not diabetic. You're not a diabetic. But what I recommend is we monitor your blood sugar all the time. And you make sure that you're doing your cheese sticks with some peanut butter and apple. We got to make sure that you're doing just the right blends. Or you're eating one thing here and then one thing here. And half an hour later, one thing here, one thing here. It's a guessing game. And that's the confusion. But here's what's amazing about it all. What you're going to see now and where we're heading to in alternative health and wellness is you're going to see science. You're going to see science. Like, check this out. Here's how many people did this. Here's how many people tried that and it worked. Here's how many people did this. There was a study that says this, and you're going to see a lot of that, and it's going to, you're going to buy into it, and in the end, you're just going to be playing the same old guessing game with your health and chronic illness. And all that's fine is if you're a healthy person, everything seems okay, and you're doing your exercising, you're working out, you're a trainer, you're an athlete, or you're somebody that just works out, you eat good, and you can just play with that. You can play in that land where, wow, all these people, good results at blood sugar. If they try this, let's do this monitor here. Let's try. And all that's great. But when you're chronically sick, you're really sick, and you've spent a lot of time on Mattress Island or in bed, which is Mattress Island or Couch Island, it's an entirely different story. It's back to the same old drawing board. Lindsay on IG says, I used to wear a glucose monitor and had crazy lows and highs of blood sugar and now it's all normalized and no need to wear a monitor thanks to medical medium lifestyle which takes me to the next point mm info allows people to not have to go into eating disorder land 
blood sugar monitoring eating disorder, OCD, obsessive compulsive behavior land. It can help protect people and protect them from falling prey into going backwards. I noticed something right now in the health movement is people can come out with a convincing approach, suck a whole people, a bunch of people in through advertisements and ads and money, suck them down a funnel, get them sold on something, and now they're checking their blood sugar every half a freaking hour. And you can lose your mind doing it. You can lose your mind. You get sold that it's control you're going to be achieving for yourself. You're going to be sold that it means that you're in self-control now. You are in control of your destiny, of your life, of your health. You just wear that blood sugar monitor, sign into this program, make sure you look at all the stats and things, fill out all the stuff they want you to fill out, pay a little $19.99 or $39.99 here. Uh huh. And in the end, you're chasing a unicorn is what you're doing. And me, I'd rather chase a unicorn then chase an apparition of a unicorn. And then find myself in the end, just stuck back into the same old hell. They don't know why I'm sick. They don't know why I'm fatigued. They don't know why I have eczema or psoriasis. They don't know why I'm dizzy, blurry eyes, aches and pains. My legs feel like sandbags. My arms feel like sandbags. I got tingles and numbness. I got vertigo, tinnitus, all kinds of popping sounds in my ears, infections, lung infections. I don't feel good. I catch the flu or the C every single month. And most of my time is spent on the couch or in bed and I got sucked into a whole nother bullshit scam. And that's what happens to people every day. So Michelle says, people didn't know how to get enough calories without fat. They did not. Medical Meme Info put that out there to get calories enough without all of the fats. Yeah, so people don't know how to get enough calories. It's true. And if you know medical meme information, you can learn that you can get enough calories and do it right so you can sustain yourself and protect your adrenals. But going back to this very important point, one thing I hear every now and then that was kind of chanted into the medical medium community was, I'm detoxing too fast. It's hard on my adrenals. No, it's not. Unless you're doing something that isn't what you should be or could be doing. Unless you're doing something that isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Very important to know. It's like, it's like literally a zombie bite. A zombie bite. I'm detoxing too much. It must be hard on my adrenals. No, nothing is hard on the adrenals unless you're doing something to be hard on your adrenals. That's all. That's all. What's hard on your adrenals? Caffeine. Are you doing chocolate? Just want to know. Do I have to do fly on the wall again? And usually people are feeling real symptoms and it's not detox. It's real symptoms. And sure, some people do feel the malaise of an intense detox if they were really toxic and really sick to begin with. But even then, it's not what people think. Meanwhile, so many people are going through fat withdrawal, MSG, MSG withdrawal, chocolate withdrawal. How much chocolate are you on? How much coffee are you on? How much MSG are you on? Are you on nutritional yeast? Because that stuff makes you high. Do you know why people need to pound that stuff? Like they need to pound it. Like I know people where it's not a teaspoon of nutritional yeast. It's a quart of it. Like they have to pound it in their recipes. It tastes like cheese. It's so good. It's, it's like the brewer yeast was. It's just yummy. The nutritional yeast, the brewer yeast. Because that MSG, we get high on it. And boom, 
Our neurons are going off and firing off. And people are so used to being high all day. When you come off of it, you feel, you really feel it. You aren't high enough. Then you come off and you feel it. You go through a withdrawal if you were up here all the time. So, <clears throat> we're talking about blood sugar. If you guys just got here, we're going to make a stovetop macaroni and cheese. We're going to do that in a few minutes. Just covering some blood sugar information. Let's go into vinegar and apple cider vinegar. So, people believe in the health field that apple cider vinegar stabilizes blood sugar. Eh. No, it doesn't. But what vinegar does, apple cider vinegar does, is it destroys the bones. It destroys the teeth. It ruins teeth. You do 10 years of apple cider vinegar, eventually your teeth will dissolve from the inside out. From the inside out. I don't know how or in what way or I don't know if it takes an angel coming out of the sky. I don't know if it takes a gigantic squid coming out of the ocean. I don't know and devours a ship. I don't know what it's going to take for people to stop their vinegar or to learn what their vinegar does to them. I'm doing medical medium and it's hurting me. I'm doing medical medium and I, I ruined my health. I did medical medium. No, what you did was vinegar. You couldn't stay away from it. It was impossible. It was in every single condiment in your refrigerator. It was your apple cider vinegar shots. You did lots of chocolate. Don't say you didn't do lots of chocolate. You ate in restaurants, which was loaded with canola oil and vinegar and MSG. You did your popcorn. You did your high fats because you were only low fat or no fat for two weeks or three weeks in your life. If at best, if at best. And with all that, probably ups and downs and challenges and deficiencies you had long before medical medium information came your way. Severe, severe deficiencies in your life. Let's see, Iganza says, your books are amazing, cleared my acne I've had since 13 years old. I'm 34, now happy to implement MM protocols. Which leads me to this topic I wanted to say. People can heal. They actually can. They really can. And I don't judge people. I don't judge them for what they're intercepted by. What's happening in health and wellness is not like it was six years ago, four years ago, eight years ago, 15 years ago. It is a smorgasbord of shit. I'm not saying it because I'm like, Mr. Big Man, the medical medium's the best. I'm the best. It has nothing to do with it. This information comes from above is where it comes from. I'm just the messenger. But it's important for people to know that, yeah, the environment has changed. People get lost easy out there and they're trying so many different things. It took all these years with the fight I had to fight to try to get alcohol out of herbal tinctures. Did you guys know this? There's more glycerin tinctures out there in the world now without alcohol because of medical medium and from the fight, the fight. Even people, I won't mention their name, popular, so-called popular in the genre of health and healing, different doctors and stuff like that, pounded people to death with alcoholic tinctures. Just grain alcohol, pounded them to death with corn grain alcohol. It took years to get alcohol out of supplements and it's still in there and it's still out there, but, but it's less than it ever was. But then social happens and the amount of advertisements 
and products that have junk and garbage in them, food products that have junk and garbage in them, is just no way to keep things clean out there. And I don't judge people if they turn around and they leave medical meeting for five seconds, they take their attention off, and now they hear some dude say, no, you actually, cacao powder is really good for you. It's helpful. It's helpful for your adrenals. It's helpful for your heart. It's got antioxidants in it. It's so easy to be brain so easy and then you're like whoa i love chocolate i'm gonna be on chocolate you should do apple cider vinegar because apple cider vinegar is the real thing and make sure you do it with mother you shouldn't do the other vinegars but wait a minute medical medium once told me and i'm forgetting right now somehow i'm forgetting something's taking over my brain i thought medical medium says that apple cider vinegar actually dissolves your teeth and can actually damage your liver and actually hurts your health and your connective tissue. Wait, I'm forgetting it. For some reason, I'm forgetting it. There it goes. I forgot. I don't even remember medical medium. Apple cider vinegar is that good. I'm going to take some shots of it now. Maybe it'll help my blood sugar. It's easy to get derailed by the amount. The amount of propaganda that's out there, both in the vegan land and the animal protein land, all of it. I see people putting liver in their smoothies Animal liver, I don't, I have nothing against people eat, eating animal products. Medical medium information is about you can eat animal products and learn the information and heal and still do it on animal products. You can do it on plant-based. You can do it vegetarian. You just have to learn the information so you can heal. People are putting some of the most toxic stuff I've ever seen ever in their smoothies. They're putting actual beef liver, which is the toxic waste, the toxic dump. They're putting in there. And these are the things that are going on out there. And I'm not even scratching the surface. Shamrocks and Sunflower says, actually, a medical medium is the best. It's the only thing that is healing my eye see. And I tried everything. It's incredible. Aline says, when I heard your podcast about swelling, that's that's a really great episode. It was an enlightenment for me. I have um, lipedema, lymphedema. I ordered your liver cleanse and other cleanse book. Excited to start because it's so hard. I'm really proud of you. It's a great, great way to start. Great place to start. Really important. So I'm going to pop some, some macaroni in here. Just gonna add a little bit more water to this first real quick. Guys, I'm making the macaroni and cheese. Had that boiling for a while, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. It's really hard watching people become slaves. Slaves of the blood sugar scam that's happening out there in the world. I know we want control and we want to feel like we have full control over our health and wellness. But Every prediction, if that's what you want to call it, every prediction that I put out there comes true over the years, comes true one way or another. Every time I say something like carnivore people are going to be on honey and apples, they end up on honey and apples. The plant-based people all go back to eggs right when they leave plant-based. They go back to eggs. I've said it for years, long before. Whatever it is, long C is Epstein-Barr, and then it comes out later that long C is Epstein-Barr. Multiple sclerosis is caused by Epstein-Barr infections, published at first, and then years later, science puts it out. That's the cause of multiple sclerosis. And these are just a few things. And I'm telling you now, the whole blood sugar game where you got a monitor stuck to you and you're playing around with graphs and charts, 
and you're signing up to stuff and you're eating this food and this in combination and eating this in combination, you're looking at your butts, you're completely getting smoke and mirrors, bait and switch is what's happening. So I'm making this stovetop mac and cheese. And even with me saying all of that, I'm making macaroni and cheese. And you might be like, that guy's crazy. Everything he just told me, he's making mac and cheese. But it's mac and cheese without the bad stuff. Michelle says, my family won't listen even though I've helped them before. I understand. So I'm about to make some good stuff right here. I'm going to get the potatoes ready. I'm making a fat-free cheese for the macaroni. So it's stovetop macaroni and cheese, cheese. It's not vegan cheese in the sense where, you know, the vegan cheese you can buy in the store, which is loaded with natural flavors. It could be loaded with soy. It could be loaded with all kinds of different things. Maybe it's an almond cheese. Maybe it's something like that. But there's always something in there that shouldn't be in there. And there's always a percentage of something bad in there that shouldn't be in there either. Now, how do we stabilize our blood sugar? Like the true way of stabilizing our blood sugar, we minimize the fat intake in our diet. We lower it. And it all depends on where you're at. Is it your pancreas, your adrenals, and your liver that are struggling? Is it just your liver? Is it just your adrenals? Whatever it is that's happening out of those three, in most people, it's liver and adrenals. Whichever it is, though, once you start removing some of the fats out of your diet, eating enough calories that are in the safe zone, making sure you're hydrated just enough, blood sugar problems start to dwindle and start to disappear. It's something that you don't want to have to worry about. I don't worry about my blood sugar. I don't say throughout my day, Anthony William says, crap, my blood sugar. Like, my blood sugar is totally off. I got to worry about it. Where's it at? It's, you know, like, I have to be scared about my blood sugar. Chase says, I'm not talking about eating a whole chocolate bar talking about eating a single square of dark chocolate from actual cacao. Haha, ha. countless studies proving the benefits. Why do you have to eat a single square? Are you afraid? You afraid of something, Chase? Afraid of something? Why are you eating a single square? Huh? Because you're scared shit to eat the whole bar? Why? Because you eat a whole chocolate bar every day? You're going to feel it. You're going to start getting sick. It's going to wear you out. How about two chocolate bars? No disrespect. I love your comment. And I, I appreciate you being here. Seriously. I do. Why don't you have four chocolate bars? Why are you eating a square? I, I'm curious. I just need to know. Somebody tell me. Why are you eating a square? Because you're afraid you're just going to go into the chocolate drawer? Where's your chocolate? I need the chocolate, I need my high. I gotta keep it to a square. I gotta keep it to a square. Somehow I gotta keep it to a square. I got a chocolate bar right here. <laughs> because you're scared shit of the chocolate. Caffeine is a neurotoxin. I'm gonna eat this little square piece of chocolate. I'm gonna tell myself, there's countless studies out there. I know it. There's countless studies out there. It doesn't matter if it makes me feel crazy or if it makes me start yelling at somebody or it makes me feel depressed and sad or I'm crying in a corner or I need another square. It doesn't matter if I'm addicted and I got to have the chocolate bar. There's countless studies that says that this chocolate's so good for me. I'm just going to have a square. Why the hell are you eating just a little square? Why? 
You're keeping it back. Look, I'm just going to have a square because that shit's crazy. That's why. Because you know it ain't good for you and that's why you're eating a square. If it was good for you, you'd be eating two or three chocolate bars every single day. Boom. 90% cacao, 70% cacao, whatever. Because the stimulant gets you high and you don't like the way it feels, but there's payback, baby. There's cause and effect. When you eat that chocolate, what goes up must come down. And guess what comes down? And guess what gets shot? And guess what gets beat up? Is your adrenals. Your adrenals. Adrenal glands. Hey, little adrenal glands. I'm going to have a little square of chocolate. A little piece. Don't you worry. I'm just a little piece. Because I'm only going to hurt you a little bit. Not a lot. I'm only going to hurt you adrenal glands a little bit, not a lot. I'm just going to have a little tiny piece of chocolate because a little piece isn't going to hurt you that bad. I'm just going to eat that. Oh, it feels good. I feel high. Oh, remember adrenal glands? The studies say that there's really good stuff in chocolate. Oh, I know what the studies said about that thing everybody took. And I know about that study that they said about those drugs. You know, I know about that bad study they said where asbestos was really good for us and that millions of people are dead because of asbestos cancer. I know the studies were, they always say they're right, but they say the cacao study is right. You guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm making stovetop macaroni and cheese. Cold white spring. They believe that in the right amount, it's medicinal. They say water is also unhealthy if it gets too much. The right amount of frog poison to make me high and shit my brains out and puke my brains out amongst a whole bunch of you know people around a campfire at night. Oh, give me that frog poison. I hear it's really good. You put it in an edible. Okay, let me take that little edible frog poison. Just a little bit is medicinal, you see? Oh, yeah. You know what's really screwed up? We talk about how we care about what we put in our bodies out there. That's all I hear out there is my body. I'll do what I want with it. I only put the best inside my body. I only put the best shit inside my body. It better be the best whatever. Our farms are grown in the best conditions and the best. Everybody just wants the best shit all the time. They go to the best stores. They just want the best stuff, right? But I'll go and just for the sake of it, put some poisonous psilocybin or some frog poison in my veins and in my heart and in my brain because I'm looking for a high. I'm looking to get effed up in my brain because life's too hard. And life's too hard. I better smoke double the weed tonight. I better just like really take in that weed because you know what? Life's really hard. I get it. And I'm not judging anybody because guess what? Life is hard and it pushes us to do things. But don't throw the scientific BS at me about what a study is on cacao because women know that they got to be careful with that stuff for a lot of reasons. They know that stuff will make them sick, jacked up, panic attacks, wiped out, and addict it like you're a fiend in a, like a fiend. IG, as a doctor, I read dark chocolate was good for you. So I would eat it thinking it was healthy. So I bought and ate it regularly. Not anymore. Thank you, AW. Anybody here who eats chocolate, I'm glad you're here. I don't judge you. That's the last thing I would ever do. If you ever ran into me in the street or something like that, it's like AW. I really got hurt about the chocolate thing. I stopped following you. I don't, I, I don't really read your books. I just didn't like the chocolate talk. I'd be like, dude, it's okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything like, hey, you're a bad person because of it. That's not it. Life's hard. If chocolate's all you're on and you're not on something far worse, that's a miracle all on its own. That's how screwed up this world is. If you're not drinking a pint of whiskey every night, then you know what? Exactly. If you're not doing a shit ton of cocaine like every night, then it's amazing. That's how crazy this world is and that's how messed up this world is. I'm gonna pop some pasta in here. But 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The pasta I'm using is on the medical medium directory. Newsflash, the pasta is on the medical medium directory. You know when you watch YouTube and stuff and you see all the ads come in and now people are doing is they're actually doing their own like ads. Right in the middle they're like telling a story and then all of a sudden it leaves there and it, it gets edited and now they're like, if you sign up for our $39.99 blah, 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 and you got to wait for him to stop, and it's like, okay, back to the story. All right, so I'm going to make some cheese in a little bit too, but I just want to wait a, just a little bit before I make that, but I am going to peel the potatoes. You want this to be like a cheese where you don't want the skins on the potatoes, so I'm taking a fork, and just taking this, you don't want a, like a brown cheese. This is going to be a beautiful, delicious cheese without the nutritional yeast, the MSG, without the additives. This beats any vegan cheese out there. I don't care what anybody says, hands down. I mean, some of the vegan cheeses are so bad out there. I'm like, unless you have an issue, you're probably better off with the cow cheese. That's pure. <laughs> it, I mean, that's how bad the vegan cheeses are. I'm just kidding. Like, when someone says, hey, come over, AW. I'm going to make a really great dish, and I got this killer vegan cheese. I go, all right, that's not making me want to have your dish. Some crazy vegan cheese, a new vegan cheese out there in the store. That's not making me want your dish. You guys, follow me on Telegram if you get a chance. T.me slash medical medium. Telegram, okay? Exclusive audio messages. I'm going to be leaving a lot of them pretty soon. And who knows what I'm going to say. I have a feeling I'm going to be saying some pretty intense stuff. Sign up to the medical medium newsletter. If you get a chance as well, sign up to the medical medium newsletter for all kinds of different notifications of all our free stuff. Free, free, free. That's what we do. Follow me on TikTok. You guys, I'm trying TikTok again. I'm giving it a shot. I'm trying it again. We were on TikTok. Spirit and I, Spirit of Compassion and I were on TikTok. We were getting up to like, we were heading up to a million followers on TikTok, right? I was doing these videos that were really funny, so I heard. Oh, they, they cracked me up as well, though. And then TikTok said, you no longer can be on here. And then they let me come back. And so I'm back on TikTok and I'm going to be doing some fun stuff. So you might want to, you know, follow my TikTok. I already steamed these potatoes. So that's something to know. So you're not like wondering what I'm doing right here with raw potatoes. You might be like, whoa, wait a minute. Are these raw potatoes he's got right there? I'm just taking the skins off of these potatoes. Moving them out. Boom. I'm just going to have a little bit of this frog poison. Yep. When he says, oh my God, peeling hack. Yeah, take a fork. Steamed potato. I just took the skins off. I mean, you might have a little bit left over. Just a touch. That's okay. That's all right. Pasta's boiling up. It's getting there. We'll be done soon. Pasta, pasta. So good. This is a wheat pasta with high in gluten. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Someone's going to take that and they're going to edit it. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is actually a gluten-free pasta. So it's really good. So let's go into it a little bit. Well, 
Lauren says, what if your nutritional yeast doesn't have MSG? That's the problem. I'm really glad you said that. Really glad. Listen to my podcast about nutritional yeast. There is no nutritional yeast that doesn't have MSG. There is no nutritional yeast that doesn't have MSG. There's no apple cider vinegar that doesn't kill your liver, burn out your stomach glands in your stomach and kill your HCL and dissolve your bones and teeth. There is no apple cider vinegar that does not do that. You guys know what happened? Do you remember when conventional wisdom and conventional medical science said it is safe to breathe in asbestos. It is safe to have lead in gasoline. It is safe to smoke. It is safe to have lead in paint chips. It is safe to take a thousand drugs that they took off the market because they had to pull them from the market because they weren't safe. Are you forgetting that whole thing that happened? Because in alternative medicine, they're doing the same thing. Chocolate's good for you. And maybe if you're not chronically sick and you want to play with a little bit of chocolate, so be it. But if you're somebody that's really struggling with a chronic illness, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like death by a thousand cuts, remember? I'm talking about like what chips away at you when you're already struggling and sick. Alternative medicine and wellness, health and wellness has made it. That's good. That's dumb. Has made it so that they tell you everything is good and it isn't. I've never been the food police. I need a place to put this pot down. I'm going to put it down here. All right. Guys, bear with me a little bit. I am just getting some macaroni here in a bowl. And I'm going to actually make some cheese now. I'm not the food police. When my friends or family come over, I will make them anything they want. If that means I have to go to the store and pick up something that's on the medical medium warning. Warning, don't eat if you're sick. Even if it's something like that, I'll go pick it up. If I got company over and they're like, well, I'm hankering for this. I'll be like, all right, where do you want me to go? I'll go find it. I'll go to the store. What do you want? You want cheese? I'll go find it. It's not like this. You come to the medical medium house and it's like, no, you only eat with the medical medium wants you to eat. You only eat this, celery juice. You're just going to drink celery juice here and that's all you're going to have. Right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is pop these potatoes in the food processor. I'm not the food police when my friends or family come over. I don't tell them what they should eat. I'll prepare them something, anything they want. And I'll tell them about options and stuff to heal or tell them about some good stuff they can have. All right. I'm going to get these potatoes in here. I'm going to cut them in pieces. So I'm just going to actually break them down a little bit. But if you're really sick and you want to go as far as you can with your healing process, you want to go as far as it needs to take,
But if you're a guest in my house and you are there, yeah. I want to make sure I'm a good host. All right, so I got some potatoes in here for my cheese. And I'm going to put some carrots in here as well. Steamed carrots. I'm going to add some water to this. I'm going to do some um, onion powder. I'm going to do about two tablespoons of onion powder. You want a decent amount of onion powder in here. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic powder in here too. Here we go. A little bit of paprika in here. Yeah, and we're gonna put a little bit of dried oregano in here too. It's gonna be really good. A little bit of turmeric, which will probably add to obviously the cheese color. There's no soy in here, just so you know. There's no soy in here at all. I'm gonna add some lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. A little strainer here. One about, I got a, a just a large amount of pasta I made. I made basically two boxes of pasta. So it's gonna take more than really a small amount of lemon, but I'll put a little bit more in here. A little strainer here. Add a little bit of water too. Two thirds of a cup should do it. The lemon helps to give it this zesty, good flavor. You can add salt if you like. I have some um, some family coming over, and I think they're going to have this dish, so I might have to put a little bit of salt in here. There's people that can't live without salt. They can't live without the flavor, the taste of salt. Like they won't eat their food. They just won't if it's missing. Put the lemon juice in here. Okay. Let me try this. Are you guys okay with this? Let's see what happens. All right. Let's get a lid on it and put a little water in there as well. Start with that. I'm gonna add some more if I need to. Kind of like add, and I'm gonna need a wire. It's my favorite thing to do. Boom. in a blender but usually in blenders you've got to add a little bit more water and I don't want a really like I think it's coming out really good color. Grizzy Grizz says beautiful color. That's a compliment. I'll take any compliments. Look at this. Really great. Thank you. Everybody else like this? Is this okay? Karen says question. 
Who cleans your kitchen when you are done making a mess? A whole team of people that because I am too above cleaning, I am so above cleaning, I'm just into, I go get my massage after this, I go take a run, and I get my nails done. But, so I can't be bothered with cleaning. I do the cleaning, I do the cleaning. I break my butt and clean up the mess. I made the mess, I will clean it. So that's the cheese right there. Now this is the creamy cheese, putting some on, just like that. Amazing, amazing. So I'm just gonna get the cheese to get in here a little bit. I'm gonna add some more. I like it creamy. There we go. Now I'm just mixing it in a little bit here. It's piping hot, so it's actually, and I might even with the rest of this, I might even add a touch more to this one. No fat, no butter, no oil. There's no oil in here. This is non-dairy. No soy. No vegan cheese that's filled with natural flavors and everything else that's terrible. None of that either. This cheese is the good part. I don't want to waste it. I want every bit of it in here because this is really how this becomes so good. Amazing. Got to give it some mix time. Now you got to think this is a dairy-free mac and cheese is what it is. Now, you can go one step past this if you would like. You can put this in a baking dish. Set the oven for um, 350. Set the oven for 375. And you can put this in a baking dish and you can make baked mac and cheese. You know how you do that? Or, and then you actually put it right in. And that's the mac and cheese right there. <clears throat> I mean, you can definitely do an oven where you just toast the top if you really wanted to, which is incredible. But there it is. <clears throat> incredible. That's the stovetop macaroni and cheese, you guys. We talked about blood sugar. Talked about stabilizing blood sugar. Now, one of the things that happens, a big mistake that people make with blood sugar is they're in a vicious cycle. And I wanted to cover this because this is the part I actually didn't cover yet. So it's important. They're in a vicious cycle of insulin resistance where they have to eat the thing that doesn't help them, but it, yet it feels like it helps them in order to stabilize their blood sugar. So if someone gets the shakes or they get the low blood sugar or the hypoglycemia, whatever it is that they're, you know, that they're dealing with, or they're monitoring their blood sugar, but they're told to eat things to stabilize their blood sugar, when in turn it doesn't stabilize their blood sugar, but yet it feels like it does. 
So it's like, whoa, I have to eat something right now. I'm having a blood sugar low. I'm having a blood sugar problem. And then they go and eat some hummus. Say. And I'm not saying hummus is terrible or anything. But because of all the tahini or the oil in the hummus, they feel like, whoa, that just stabilized me. And they just had a bunch of fat and that just stabilized me. And, but yet that's not the answer to fixing a blood sugar problem. Regardless, I need some chips. A lot of people do this thing like just need a few chips. They open up a bag of chips. It could be like a healthier bag of chips in the natural food store. And they go and they open a healthy bag of chips and they eat like three or four chips and they get stabilized, right? And they think, whoa, I'm stabilizing my blood sugar. Or they eat a handful of nuts or half a bag of nuts and they're like, I'm stabilizing my blood sugar. Or they have some bacon and they're like, whoa, I'm stabilizing my blood sugar. But it's a catch-22 because here you're having blood sugar problems and then you're using things that put you into a vicious cycle where the problem will never be fixed and it'll just keep going and going and going because you don't fix the actual root problem. Rose Jackson said, the absolute disrespect and slander we receive from everyone when we speak about your info as though we are in the wrong because it's not science. Yeah, I know. I know you guys bear it. You bear it well, man. And I'm honored to be in this with you, truly. It takes a special soul to see through the smoke, to understand what this is and what the information is in the Medical Medium book series, to understand what's in, in the podcast, the Medical Medium podcast. It takes a special soul to understand that and to see it and see through everything. And then, you know, to hear crap from people out there in a world that's sick, right? Like they got all the answers. So I've taught mac and cheese right here. That's the recipe. It's in the Brain Saver Protocols. Check the book out if you'd like. All right, you guys. Covered some blood sugar information, blood sugar talk. Quick rundown right now that just keep in mind that any of the cleanses in the Medical Medium books is supportive of blood sugar problems. Critical to know. Anybody who's actually worried about their blood sugar numbers, they're dealing with blood sugar issues, it's good to know why we have problems with our blood sugar and it's good to know how to address it and to beat it over time. And also protect your adrenals at the same time and restore and cleanse your liver. Anyway, you guys, thank you for hanging around. And um, I'll see you next time.